for coming up on stage. I asked Dar to speak for as long as he possibly could, not because I don't like uh, doing these things, but I really think that he explained the why of why we're doing this. I think that is really the, the main thing to, to the main message we want to convey here. The what, the how, I think is of less importance. I will go, you know, a little bit deeper into the what and how, uh, but I won't bore you with uh, all the details. Um, so, can, can you hear me better? Yeah, okay. So, um, I guess in a way, when we started ODTN, um, we started talking to companies like Entity Communications to understand what the real drivers are, what the real needs are. Um, and I guess, you know, having these conversations with many of you, we, we identified the, the need, the requirement to build software artifacts um, around open and disaggregated optical transport networks. Now, um, talking about uh, different, you know, components that this exemplar platform uh, consists of, I think, you know, they're in the first couple of bullets. First of all, we need open and common data models. Uh, obviously, in optical networking, I think if you ask any uh, vendor, hey, guys, do you have an, uh, an open uh, model? You, have, you use open protocols? They will say, yeah, for sure. Actually, it, I was in, uh, in Dallas, I think, in November uh, last year where there was a workshop organized by Light Reading, and there were about seven, eight vendors coming up on stage, and all of them said, we have open. It's, it's readily available. Now, the problem is it's all open, but it's not common, right? So every single vendor comes along with its own open interfaces, its own models. And in the end, you know, the, the operator is still stuck with the kind of, you know, integration activities and all the, you know, the mess that creates in terms of operating uh, those kind of uh, networks. Uh, so, so that's really the number one pillar of, of our uh, exemplar platform. The second one is disaggregation. Right. Um, it, it's very clear, you know, the trend for disaggregation in the whole community is, is very clear. Right. We see, we see a lot of exciting opportunities and access in the radio space, um, in, the, in the data center space. Um, it, I must say, you know, there's a little, a little bit of hesitance, a little bit of concern in how far we can really do this in, in optical transport. Right. Uh, technically, it's a very complicated problem. Uh, but not only that, I think, you know, in, in, in transport as well, it, it, it's obvious that, you know, in terms of volumes, in terms of market potential, it's smaller than when you look at, for example, Nepal, right? Where there's, you know, millions and millions of subscribers, whereas transport is much, much uh, lower in terms of uh, pure uh, volume. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, I'll show you, you know, what we have planned in this project. Uh, but I just want to make this, you know, kind of caveat. Uh, the second kind of objective we put out for ourselves is to bring this ecosystem together. And in a minute, uh, you'll see what we mean by that e ecosystem, or at least who are the, the operators and vendors that have subscribed to this vision and are really wanting to uh, contribute to this. Uh, but ultimately, you know, we as Open, Open Networking Foundation, we are all about open source in the first place. Uh, and building that kind of software artifacts, uh, kind of reference implementation, we like to call it, uh, is our, you know, number one priority. Okay, and then obviously, you know, uh, all of this is in vain if we can't get this at least in the lab to be trialed, hopefully further on in field and uh, eventually production deployments. Uh, in terms of timing, we are pretty aggressive. Um, so we have a plan for a year, year and a half, maybe two years. Uh, actually, uh, next month we'll have, and we started this in January of this year, but next month, uh, one of the operators is planning on, on getting it up and running in a very you know, simple uh, configuration, but get it up and running in their labs uh, next month. Okay? And then, uh, you know, as I said, we, we, we rallied, tried to rally the community. We started with three leading service providers. I'll show you them in a minute. They have grown to five by now. So we're three months in, and you know, we, we've, we've shown some kind of interest and traction, and we can only hope um, this uh, keeps on accelerating and keeps on growing, along with a bunch of vendors, and I'll, I'll show you them in a minute. So these are the uh, participants that, um, that subscribe to this vision. Obviously, NTT, has, uh, it's more than founding partners, really, you know, bringing the, 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 the true vision to the table. I think we should be really um, um, affirmative on this and, and, and be, be very uh, open about it. Uh, but Comcast joined, Telefonica joined. Telefonica is the one that is, you know, 
planning on, on doing a, a, field, a, a lab trial next month. Uh, so that's, you know, that's pretty good news and, and, and very um, hopeful, makes me hopeful for the future that we can keep on uh, accelerating this kind of project. There's a telephone, Telecom Italia and China Unicom as well uh, that uh, are confirmed active participants. And this is really one of the key points I wanted to um, stress is that both for uh, a set of operators that have joined um, and the vendors, uh, we all want them to actively contribute to this project, right? So we, we made a very you know, tough ask, especially from operators, where we said, hey, if you guys really want this, we don't want you to sit by the sidelines and consume whatever we produce. We want you to bring in um, people that write software, bring in architects that help define the architecture for that software, right? I think it's a key point, and it, you know, it, it was not an easy ask. I can completely understand that, but it, it was truly necessary if you want to um, be successful. Because ultimately, you know, ONF as a, a kind of small organization, we do not have the the expertise, we do not have the, vol the, the, the volume or the people to really carry all of this, right? Um, same uh, holds for these, you know, kind of leading uh, operators in the space. Uh, we asked them. Say again, vendors, vendors in this space. Um, we asked them not just, you know, send me, you know, a shipping label with, with, or a box with uh, some equipment, and then we'll take over. No, no. If you want to do this, make sure your device is integrated with, you know, the whole uh, architecture diagram. Help us build the kind of uh, platform support that we need uh, to get everything up and running. Okay. Then there's a bunch of uh, up, uh, vendors that that you know are not able for various reasons, right? Either they don't have the people or not the manpower or not, you know, the vision maybe to, to really step up and, and, and contribute uh, as much. But we're still very grateful for the kind of experience uh, and, and expertise they're bringing into the, uh, into the project to help us uh, build everything. And again, we see growth here, right? Uh, I think Adva and Finera, they were not on the original list of uh, vendors. Coriant, same, they were not on, uh, but they, they joined uh, just recently, all of them. So, so, you know, this kind of a who's who in terms of uh, vendors uh, in, in the optical space. So we're pretty happy with uh, this kind of um, constellation. A, a final point really is that um, many people are like, yeah, but you should have 10, 20, 30 uh, operators. Um, we kind of, you know, as much as we want that, I think it's very important for us to show and to demonstrate actual workable solutions in the next six to 12 months. If you bring 20 operators to the table, we'll have 20, maybe 30 different requirements, right? Uh, it'll be very, very hard and very challenging to, to agree on something, to build some kind of consensus, and to actually go ahead and do it. So, so obviously, you know, I, I, I really wanna, don't, don't wanna be too exclusive, and in, in that sense, you know, be very open to uh, your request to participate. But we, we, we intentionally try to get only operators that are very and thoroughly motivated to, to help us build this, okay? So that's kind of the, the high level. Uh, I'll, I'll dig one level deeper of what we're actually, okay, what, what we're actually doing. I'll, I'll, I'll keep it at this one, I see. Uh, so, so when I say disaggregation and use open interfaces, well, open interfaces, you know, there's some competing standards out there, or at least some uh, standards that have certain pieces of overlap. Um, in, in a nutshell, we'll use TAPI, Transport API, as a service uh, level API. And we'll be using OpenConfig uh, as a southbound, as a device level API. OpenConfig, by the way, also doubles as the kind of abstraction inside of ONOS uh, to describe, you know, the, the state and, 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 and the, the, the feature set of the optical network. Um, in, in, in the first phase, uh, and we have actually three phases in this project, first phase really focuses on, on very simple optical networks, but simple, you know, if it's that simple, why is it not already available, right? Um, so the first phase is an open line system where essentially it's a very crude form of disaggregation. You simply start with the transponder and everything else, right? Uh, and then, you know, there's different levels. Do we have uh, the controller talk to every individual piece in the, in the open line system or do we go through some, some kind of uh, OLS controller that, that actually abstra already does some form of abstraction for us? Uh, you know, th there's various stages of, uh, for us to achieve this goal. And it, again, it depends kind of on what the operator uh, really wants. Uh, then one level deeper, and I'll, I'll, I'll cut it short after that, uh, is when we start looking at Rotom, right? Uh, at that point, um, 
the, 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 the form of disaggregation is still very crude. You know, you have the whole rotom box and the transponder. Uh, last level is really the full disaggregation. And here, I'm, I must say, you know, the details become very blurry in that it's not at all clear what level of disaggregation is achievable, is realistic in, in a pragmatic sense. You know, what, what can we build that actually works? Uh, m my guess is, my hunch is, it will be some intermediate form, not this kind of really fine-grained component level disaggregation, uh, but a kind of two, three-stage level of disaggregation. Uh, but the exact details I really can't uh, share with you. So I'll, I'll leave it at that in the interest of time, and I'll be happy and, and I as well to take any questions. Any questions for Dai or Mark? All right. Thank you very much, uh, gentlemen.